Hey guys, it's Michael here from FlySight. Uh, today we're going to talk about the relationship between airspeed and ground speed and how we can use GPS data from the climb to altitude to estimate the speed of the wind. To begin with, we have an aircraft in flight. The red arrow here shows the aircraft's velocity relative to the air. The direction of the arrow is the aircraft's heading and the length of the arrow is its airspeed. For this discussion, we're going to assume that the aircraft is flying with a constant airspeed, so the length of the arrow doesn't change, but its direction can change. The blue arrow shows the wind velocity relative to the ground. Again, the direction of the arrow shows the direction the wind is blowing, and the length of the arrow shows the wind speed. For now, we're going to assume that the wind's speed and direction are constant, so the blue arrow won't change at all. If we add the aircraft's airspeed to the wind speed, we get the aircraft's velocity relative to the ground, which is shown by the green arrow. Let's try turning the aircraft to the right and see what happens. The wind velocity shown by the blue arrow stays exactly the same. The aircraft's airspeed, the length of the red arrow, stays the same, but its heading changes. The sum of these two again gives us the aircraft's ground velocity shown by the green arrow. The dotted green line will follow the tip of the green arrow as we turn the plane around. Let's finish the turn. Let's get rid of the plane now and turn this into a graph. In this graph, the dotted green line shows the aircraft's ground velocity for every possible heading. No matter which way we turn the plane, its ground velocity will wind up somewhere on that green circle. The center of the green circle coincides with the wind velocity, and its radius is determined by the plane's airspeed. So if we could measure the green circle, we could determine both the wind velocity and the plane's airspeed. Let's take a look at a real world example. Here, we've measured the aircraft's ground speed during the climb to altitude. During a typical climb, the plane will stay roughly at a constant airspeed, but it'll turn one way or the other to stay on the course the pilot chooses. In this case, the pilot is following his normal course. He isn't doing anything special like a right one turn. We see a complete circle because the pilot pointed the plane in every direction at some point during the climb to altitude. Let's fit a circle to this data. The green circle shows the best fit to the measured data. The dot shows the center of the circle. Once again, the position of the green dot gives us the wind velocity shown by the blue arrow. The radius of the circle, shown by the red arrow, tells us the plane's airspeed. The wind velocity is the most interesting of these two results. With this information, we could remove the effect of wind from our freefall measurements. We made a few assumptions here which I'd like to reiterate. First, we assumed the plane's airspeed was constant. This is usually, but not always, true for the climb to altitude. Second, we assumed the wind speed and direction were constant. We all know this isn't always true, but in my tests, it's proved to be surprisingly close to true most of the time. If we had a significant change in wind speed or direction at some altitude, we could choose to analyze the data on either side of that change. Finally, we assume the aircraft isn't pointed in one direction for the entire data set. In order to fit a circle to the data, we really need a good sample of different headings. The pilot doesn't need to do a special turn. A couple of small turns on the way to altitude should do the trick. We measure the ground velocity of the aircraft on the way to altitude simply by leaving the fly sight on for the climb. In exchange, 
we get a fairly accurate estimate of the winds just minutes before our actual jump. We can use this to remove the effect of wind from our freefall measurements and get a more accurate measurement of our performance. If we correct for wind in this way, we can also compare our performance from one day to the next. That's it. Thanks for watching.